What's up guys, Zach Hample here with you, or at least my hands in this video, because we're gonna be taking apart this Major League Baseball to find out exactly what's in the middle. I have a whole bunch of tools here, and I'm gonna start with this one, which is a seam ripper. You can kind of see what it looks like, might be a bit blurry, but you get the idea. I have taken apart several baseballs in the past, never for my own YouTube channel though, and I can tell you that it takes quite a while, so that's why I'm speeding up the video right here, otherwise we'd be here all day and all night. Every baseball has 108 stitches, and by the way, that red thread comes from Canada. You can see right here what it looks like underneath the cowhide cover as we start to make some progress. And another fun fact for you, every Major League Baseball is hand-stitched in Costa Rica. Now I'm gonna slow it back down and actually give you some volume because listen to this progress cutting the stitches. Now that was a glorious sound right there. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. But here's something else that's also really cool. Completely pulling off the cover from the inside of the ball. And despite the fact that all the stitches are cut, it's still kind of tricky because there's a layer of adhesive that gets applied to the cowhide so that it sticks to all that string underneath. There's what it looks like. And another fun fact for you, the cowhide has to measure within a window of one hundredth of an inch thick. Pretty crazy. Now take a look right here. It's hard to see, it's kind of faint, but every baseball has a special six character code printed on the inside. That's one of the many quality control methods that Rawlings uses at their factory. Here I am using a nail clipper to just get those last few stitches hanging on so you can see the two figure eight shaped pieces of the cowhide. And I wanna point something out on the other piece right there. No, uh, dude, it's upside down, flip it over. There we go. That little word right there that says practice, yeah, we are talking about practice. When balls are stamped with that, it means that there are small cosmetic defects, so they are not approved for in-game use at the major league level, but all the characteristics and specifications of the ball are fine, so they get sold to teams at a discount. Anyway, I'm speeding the video back up here as I move along to the next portion of the ball, which is known as the center. This top layer has approximately 555 feet of a thin poly cotton thread, which is supposed to all be in one piece, but evidently when I use the seam ripper, I cut it up a bit just underneath the cover. Again, the specifications are super tight. After the white layer is on top of the ball, it has to weigh within one hundredth of an ounce. And if you'll just bear with me here for a second while I get myself sorted back out, gotta make my mess a little less messy before I show you the next really, really cool part of this baseball. The red thread poking out of the gray right there. That is how they hide the final stitch of the ball. They basically poke the needle through the middle of the ball and pull it back out, and they have to have precise aim. The tip of the needle cannot stab the cowhide, so it has to go exactly right in between the seam of those two figure eight pieces. So that said, we're gonna speed the video back up as we begin to unravel the next layer, 150 feet of three ply gray yarn. Now all this yarn comes from New Hampshire, but at the factory in Costa Rica, they store it at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% humidity. Gotta keep it all consistent. Here's a closer look at that thick gray yarn that I just pulled off the ball. We'll compare it to that nice, thin, fluffy white stuff, which I promise you don't wanna use as dental floss. So there are those two layers, and we're just gonna keep it going and start peeling off the tan. Only 65 feet of this one, also a three-ply yarn. So we're pulling, we're pulling, like a layer of vanilla ice cream giving way to a scoop of chocolate underneath. You can see that darker color start to emerge, and wait for it, wait for it, there it comes. We are down to the very final layer of yarn. But before I start unraveling it, I just wanna give you a close up of what I just pulled off the ball. Nothing too fancy. It's actually kinda of scratchy, so my best advice is don't use it to knit yourself a scarf. Anyway, here we go with 220 feet of four ply gray yarn, and I gotta hit you with a couple more fun facts right after I show you this cool layer of pink emerging from underneath. All four layers inside the ball, the yarn and the thread, those get wound by machines at the factory and there are tension meters to make sure that it's not wound too tight 
or too loose. So this little pink ball in the middle, there's a layer of adhesive on that, which is why the yarn is sticking. This component is known as the pill. The rubber comes from Indonesia and it's very hard and very bouncy. Let me turn up the volume, clear a little space and show you what I'm talking about. Ready? Yeah, no wonder we see about 27 billion home runs hit each season. And as for me, try not to laugh too hard at this pathetic assortment of tools. The needle nose pliers pulling off little bits of rubber one by one, slip joint pliers, a box cutter. I don't have a big fancy workshop at my disposal, so this took a while. Ah, uh, yes, but the effort was well worth it because look at this. Mm, oh, oh. Man, that felt good, let me tell you. Now this pink layer measures exactly one tenth of an inch thick, still had a lot more of it to remove, and this footage, by the way, is sped up to 6,000%, if that gives you an idea of just how much there was. Now, with most of the pink stuff gone, is it just me or does this resemble the Death Star? What do you guys think? Do you see it? Well, there was still some more work to be done, and with my crappy tools, once again, I was at it for quite some time. All right, here we go with the very final component of the ball, all the way on the inside, which you can see as I gently pull it apart. That portion that's kind of tan and light gray, that's made of granulated cork compressed with rubber. So if you've ever heard of the cushion cork center inside a baseball, that's it. Now let's pause the video for a second. See that pink ring? I'll circle it to make sure you don't miss it. That's a separate little piece, which you can see right here I pulled apart. Looks kind of like a washer, just fits in between the two black halves at the very middle of the ball. Some baseballs, the pill and the pellets, they come apart much easier, but for some reason this one, everything was really stuck together. And my friends, that's it. You can see all the components of the ball. I'll take you through them quickly one by one. The red thread for the stitches, the two figure eight pieces of the cowhide cover, followed by the thread and all those layers of yarn. If you add up these four layers, it stretches out to about a thousand feet. That is cool. You got the rubber pieces right here, again from Indonesia, and then the very center of the ball, the pellet, with that black rubber, the washer thing, and the granulated cork. A few more quick things, starting with this ball that I started to disassemble years ago. I wanna pause it right here for a second and point out the six character code for quality control, which for whatever reason shows up a lot better on this ball. And the adhesive has really yellowed over time. You can see it inside the cowhide cover. And check out this beauty. Got this thing directly from Rawlings. They actually sell baseballs like this, not fully stitched, just to show you what that part of the process looks like. And check out my book, The Baseball, which talks about all this stuff. And while you're at it, why not pick up one of these t-shirts too? I'll throw those links in the description. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.